based in Vienna. I would just like to challenge you on one of the things you said with regard to Ukraine. Um, you said that in maybe there is a possibility for a full-scale invasion or war. I think it's more in the interest of Russia to actually have a weakened, politically and economically weakened Ukraine yeah. than to have a full-scale war. But maybe you can clarify no, that not, as, a, as a second question. I, I'm, which not, is a, I'm not predicting an invasion. I'm just saying if Putin were inclined to do something like this, this might be a good time this to do it. This might be the time, okay. <laughs> um, and maybe just a very quick follow-up question to the previous two questions. Um, on European identity, I think you said in one of your previous interviews that you do believe in the long term in a, in a common European identity. How do you think that, in terms of the European Union and the many very diverse countries in Europe, how can that be achieved? What needs to be done maybe in Brussels, in, in the institutions, or in the individual member states? Well, it's both. Um, I think that part of the problem with the European Union is that it's not really very democratic at the core. Uh, you know, for example, if you want to vote, and you know, voting is kind of a nuisance, are you going to vote in your national election or in the European election? Now, you're going to vote in your national election because that's really where power still resides. Uh, and to the extent that the EU has a lot of power, it's in the Commission, but the Commission is the least democratic part of the EU, uh, whereas the Parliament, the European Parliament, the most democratic part of the EU, is the weakest you know, of all of the branches of the EU. So I think there is a fundamental legitimacy problem where um, people just don't feel that the EU respond to them, you know, given the power of the Commission and given its lack of, you know, basic democratic accountability, you know, it, it breeds all this resentment and so forth. And so I think in the long run, strengthening, you know, the more democratic parts of, of, of the EU would be one component of that. But the other part is more of a bottom-up sense of identity where if enough Europeans Travel, you know, the, the whole Erasmus system of certifying, you know, higher education programs across Europe means that more and more Europeans um, get degrees and study in countries other than the one that they're born in, and that means they marry people from, you know, other European countries. And I think, you know, over time, that is going to create a, a sort of common sense of, you know, being European. Uh, the only problem with that is that that's, the, that's a very elite phenomenon, uh, and a lot of working class Europeans really don't have those same opportunities to take advantage of you know, the mobility that the EU offers. And so it is going to be, you know, in, in, in a way, it kind of exacerbates the existing polarization because there are some people that benefit a lot from Europe, and then there's others that you know, don't benefit. And so that, uh, you know, in the short run, I think may be a bad thing. But in the long run, you know, more and more people are going to get to know other parts of Europe, and you know, there will be some, you know, something in common. I actually think even the euro. So I think the euro was a big mistake and led to a big disaster. But even just having a common currency, you know, actually does create a certain sense of shared identity. So there's all these little things I think that over time will contribute to uh, a European identity. But it's just going to be a very slow process, particularly when the institutions aren't really designed to, you know, to promote that. 